Good morning, it's Roland from East Marsh Acres. And uh, what I'm gonna do first, I think we'll uh, probably shoot a series of uh, videos um, this weekend. Um, we have been particularly prolific in terms of creating content over the last little while. It's been a little on the busy side and uh, yeah, but there's lots of things that have been going on. Um, so originally, about a month ago or so, when we took the chickens out of the hoop house, uh, these are laying chickens, we brought them uh, to this particular uh, area and they did a very, very nice job in terms of clearing it out, etc. And then for the following two weeks, um, we had them uh, in this new um, net, uh, electric net, and we had them in this area here. Um, it's a slightly larger uh, area that we can cover, so we went uh, down to the, um, I think those are elderberries uh, there that you're seeing uh, by the post there, and then there's another one over here. Um, so we put them in, in this particular area. You can see where the chicken coop or the uh, chicken shop was actually sitting and there was the water. So you've got uh, um, some of the leftover um, gravel, etc. that they need. Um, and uh, the uh, space went all the way over to here. Um, so it's quite a large area and we had them in there for two weeks. Again, um, if you take a look at the uh, under story, um, they did a pretty good job of uh, clearing out most of the uh, the greenery that's here, uh, eating a lot of it, uh, supplementing their diets, um, etc., making the uh, the oaks yellower uh, when you actually take a look at the eggs themselves. Um, we still have ongoing issues with the integration of uh, the young chickens. I'll get to that in a minute. I just wanted to show you uh, what we've got going on here. So this is a pawpaw. Very, very young. Uh, and uh, trying to get it self-established. Competing with the thistles. So we'll do a little bit of clearing uh, once we get uh, some um, more stable uh, weather patterns in the next little while. So as I said earlier, there's an elderberry plant, there's another one, and the third. And uh, these are actually coming to flower. So we should be getting some berries a little bit later in the season. Um, this one's not flowering yet. Uh, and this one's starting to. You can see the, the tops there. Um, so there's a pawpaw, and we have a second pawpaw that's right here, and hopefully they will do quite well. We also have uh, three black um, blueberries, so there's a blueberry plant there. Here's another blueberry plant here. It's doing quite well. Um, it's taking off, and then we've got one here, and I was seeing blueberries on here earlier, so you can see the blueberries here on my thumb at the index finger. We had a fourth blueberry plant, but it seems to have succumbed right here, and I don't see any life on it at all. Um, this is a, uh, oh no, it's a uh, nanny berry. Uh, so there's one nanny berry here. That's doing quite well. And there's a smaller one over here. Um, we'll be hopefully building a bridge across the swale uh, in that area. So that's why it sort of looks like a pathway. So the pathway will go directly from the swale to the bridge to the back of our house. Um, before we get to the chickens, I wanted to show you what's happening here in our berry patch. So we have 
Rachel's strawberry plants here. It's starting to get overgrown again with uh, all of these other plants. Weeds, essentially. But uh, you can see that it's got uh, strawberries, uh, flowers on it already. And if we move over here, there are some more strawberry plants. So there's one there. There's some more there and there and over there, all the way around. Essentially where you see the orange flags, mostly, there were strawberry plants. We also have asparagus in here. So there's an asparagus plant there. Um, hasn't quite gotten to seed. Whereas this one has, well, I guess it has There's a little seed there. Uh, there's another asparagus. There's another asparagus. There's some more. So we've got a burgeoning section of asparagus and strawberry plants in this area. The strawberries all the way along. And some snails. We have an overabundance of these slugs, which essentially are snails with either a very small or no shell. So moving back out here to the less wild sections, um, we'll go over to the laying hens. Okay, this is the latest area that we've got them in. And you can see there's a mix well, these are all the young chickens, so there are six of them, um, three of the, the uh, sex link cross, so those are the reddish and white, and then the black chickens, black and brown chickens, uh, that are a different uh, variety. Um, they are not integrating particularly well. Um, don't know if it's their behavior or if it's the behavior of our older birds here. Seven of these. Uh, they don't seem to get along very well and we're still having issues with getting the young birds to get into the coop at night so I'm still having to pick them up um, they're, they're tending to rest on top of the chicken shaw and then I have to pick them up and put them inside the actual chicken shaw itself at around 9:30 or so when the sun's, the sun's going down anyways uh, they're doing a very good job and hopefully tonight or tomorrow um, we'll actually move them to a new space and that new space will incorporate this section so we'll bring it 20 feet down that way 30 feet down this way 20 feet down and then another 30 feet uh, back again so we end up with a rectangle um, we have uh, so these, that's comfrey that we have down at the base of the peach tree. I think this is a peach. Oh, this is a nectarine. And we have one fruit. So hopefully that uh, does well this year. Um, so that we can have the expectations of many more to come. There's a peach tree. And there's no fruit on it this year. Comfrey again down at the bottom. And finally, the last peach tree. So with two peach trees and one nectarine and hopefully we end up with lots and lots of fruit in the near future. So all of these trees will actually be incorporated um, into the new run that will make for the chickens. If it doesn't get, uh, uh, if it dries out today I'll uh, set up the fences and chop down some of the uh, uh, the, the work, etc. Um, I just filled up the bird feeder over here. And what we'd like to do uh, in the very near future is to build some raised beds. And those raised beds will go into this area, and you'll see a, a cow panel. Uh, similar to what we used for the deck. Um, that ca cattle panel will end up being an archway between two raised beds and hopefully we'll plant our um, 
uh, our grapes on there and uh, end up growing some, some grapes as well. Um, so bringing you over this side, um, as you can see in our earlier videos, we've had meat birds for the last, I think they're eight weeks old on Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday, so in four days. Um, but those meat birds, uh, in their third week, we brought them out here and they've been in the chicken tractor that you can see over there. And uh, they have been moving uh, across this space. So we've been going back and forth, up and down uh, with the chicken tractor. And you can see that uh, the, the droppings of the chickens has improved soil quality already so that you end up with more diversity, more density of uh, plants, etc. So it's uh, definitely moving in the direction of improving the quality of the, uh, the plants themselves. And as we get closer to the chicken tractor, you can see that it hasn't, the land hasn't had time to start regenerating yet. There's still a lot of <coughs> um, chicken squat, uh, i.e. Um, manure on the ground. And uh, this will be incorporated eventually into the soil. Uh, again, bringing the regenerative uh, kinds of um, powers that you're seeing over there to this space as well. Anyways, here are our meat birds. These meat birds, again, are going to be eight weeks old uh, next week, Wednesday. And as you can see, they are quite large for eight weeks old. Uh, considerably larger and heavier than the egg layers. Um, they also tend to be quite uh, sedentary, not using an awful lot of energy for anything other than uh, eating and uh, drinking and pooping. Uh, but they've been quite, uh, I, I think they've been quite uh, content in here. Uh, they do quite a bit of what you're seeing right now that is laying around, um, waiting for the next meal, uh, even though the uh, the feed is not completely done. It, it generally is within three or four hours or so, um, and then we uh, um, fill it up again. So we're feeding them at least twice a day, and sometimes with a little bit of a um, top up just right at, at uh, night. The watering has been going well, so they end up with one watering uh, station over there and then all of the nipples along the side um, that are tied to this bucket. So this bucket um, essentially feeds all of those nipples. Because it has been so warm over the last little while, um, so it was uh, in the 30s, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and it dipped down into the high 20s, uh, Thursday and Friday, and now Saturday. Um, so it's... Uh, it, it, it's it's uh, been quite warm and uh, difficult for the birds themselves. So what we've been doing is supplementing the water that we put into the chicken tractor um, with these uh, open pans. And they use it for primarily for uh, drinking. Um, so it's additional water that they can actually make use of. Um, the thought is that they could also put their feet in it. Uh, they tend not to, but uh, the thought is that they could put their feet in it and their feet are the primary way that they actually get rid of body heat because they have no mechanism for sweating. Um, and uh, unlike dogs, they, they can't use their tongue to, uh, to pant to get rid of uh, additional heat. So it's primarily their, uh, their feet. And you'll also see them when they're really hot, spreading their wings out, uh, putting their feet out uh, from underneath them so it's exposed to uh, the air. And uh, hopefully they can get rid of as much uh, heat as possible that way. I uh, just wanted to show you our neighbor's cherry tree, uh, which is absolutely loaded with cherries this year. Um, so there's cherries everywhere. 
I don't know what that says about what we're expecting for winter. And this, I think, is a peach tree, but it has nothing on it either. Probably because there is no other peach trees around close by to cross pollinate. Uh, the apple tree there, um, while it was, uh, for the first couple of years, it was producing apples. It looks like it has died at this point in time. All right, let's move back over. So again, this is land that the chicken tractor was on uh, earlier, quite a bit earlier. You can see some of the, the food, excess food that's still uh, sitting on the ground. Uh, waiting to be absorbed as compost. All right, let's move to the other part of the land. Okay, welcome to the main gardens uh, on the south side of the uh, land, uh, closest to the uh, to the road. And uh, what I'm showing you here is. Uh, what we've been growing for the last few weeks. Um, so this is a, uh, a row of beans that are growing up against the chicken wire. But as you can see, the beans on this end, while they're starting to regrow, um, have been chomped on quite, quite uh, liberally um, by our friendly neighborhood rabbits. And then we start to see ones that haven't been eaten as much and then as we move further on down here, you're starting to see that the beans are starting to grow up and uh, they will be uh, ready to move into the fence very, very shortly. Um, so we'll end up with a full row of beans. Oh look, there's one that's already starting to do exactly that uh, as we're going along. So it'll grow up the fence and we'll end up with the beans uh, being Oh, yeah, so there's more chowing down by rabbits here on this end. So I'm going to have to protect these as well. All right, here we have, for those of you who don't recognize the plants, potatoes. Uh, so we've uh, put two rows of potatoes in here into the one bed uh, all the way up. And they're doing quite nicely. Uh, they have a long ways to go. Um, here we have sweet potatoes. Uh, sweet potatoes, you'll see, are a vine. Um, they're actually, they're called potatoes, but they're a different kind of, they're a different family, and they grow in in vines rather than the potatoes, which are members of the same plant family um, that also includes tomatoes. Um, so sweet potatoes grow in a different kind of fashion, and here's the sweet potato here. This is lamb's quarter. It's weed, and we'll pull the lamb's quarter out. But sweet potatoes will stay. So there's one. There's one. There's one. Lamb's quarter, lamb's quarter, lamb's quarter. Lamb's quarter, lamb's quarter. Lamb's quarter. There's sweet potato. There's sweet potato. And some more lamb's quarter and sweet potato over there. So anyways, we'll end up with, a, again, a double row of sweet potato in this particular bed. And I, the, these are supposed to be carrots. So you can see that there are some carrots here. But most of this is actually just wheat. Can't help myself. And when the soil is nice and moist as it is right now, because we just ended up with a shower this morning, we end up with being able to actually pull weeds out fairly easily. The roots are, satur are saturated and they pull out of the soil. But we don't have lots and lots of carrots. So there's some, but the carrots have a problem with germination for some reason or other. And you're seeing the results of that germination issue here.
is not all lamb's quarter, but definitely all weeds. This is something called fetch. It's a grass. And fetch is fairly common in our land as well. Again, another plant growing where we don't want it, i.e. it's a weed. Yeah, weeds are just plants that you don't want in particular areas and they may be self-seeding or they could be coming from other kinds of activity so there are some carrots there very few but they are there mostly lamb's quarter leave the carrots all right i didn't come here to pull weeds even though I think I'm going to pull these biggest ones here. Just because it's easy to do while you're here in the right conditions. There's some carrots, I think, coming there. S single leaves before they start spreading out into the more recognizable carrot top. So these would be the cotyledons, seed leaves that come out of the actual seed itself, that are embryonic plants inside the seed. Here I'm relying on my background as a science educator, a biologist actually, initially. Marine biologist specifically, but I took a fair amount of botany. number of courses and then there's my interest in growing plants anyways as you'll see with my hibiscus plants etc and my wife's interest in them as well I think we're gonna have to reseed carrots again because this is not adequate the amount of space that we've got and the fact that we quite enjoy carrots we can keep them fresh through much of the winter as long as it does not freeze inside of our cold storage room okay that's half of a half of a row weeded on one side Anyways, the next row is flowers. So a number of flowers that uh, Trisha has put in. Exactly which ones are they are, I do not know. So we'll let her do that part of the explanation. All right, let's move to the outside row here. Um, and here we have, again, a mixture of uh, uh, asparagus. You can see the asparagus plants. Um, some larger ones over there and there are some strawberries in here as well and some strawberries that are coming to fruit so there's quite a nice one right there um, don't know if there are more there's, some, there's another one there being get eaten by slugs that's what you get for uh, being here quick enough Okay, that one I can take. Okay, and here we have um, garlic. And so what I'm doing here, pulling what are called scapes off the uh, top of the garlic plants. And these are the flowering parts of the plant but we don't want them to flower so we'll pull them off and we can fry them up in butter uh, or add them to other kinds of dishes 
and we'll end up with quite a tasty, I mean they taste just like garlic, um, but they're quite uh, mild, um, so they taste quite nice. All right, so here we have a number of uh, squash and other kinds of vine plants, and here's some more in this row. Why there's nothing in the middle, I don't know. Uh, these are cucumbers that were growing up against the cattle panel here. Uh, so we'll use the cattle panel essentially to um, support the cucumbers as they're growing up. So we have to wait until they grow up a little bit more. Uh, that's one that is, is growing quite nicely and we'll need to start tying that one in. Um, here are some more squash, pumpkin, that kind of thing. And you can see that they're starting to bloom as well. The bloom hidden in there. All right, so this row is primarily onions, but then you can also see last year's potatoes, uh, the ones that we missed when we actually harvested them. So this could be wee small little potatoes that are smaller than the strawberry uh, that stayed within the ground and did not freeze this year, and so it remained viable. So you can see. There's a potato plant up there that is blooming. Um, this one's almost ready to bloom. And then there are potato plants down here that are blooming already as well. So the potatoes and the onions will grow up together. And hopefully by the time the potatoes are ready, the onions will be pretty close to maximum size as well. So there's more blossoms here and here at the back. That's why these, these particular pit potatoes are uh, ahead of our other row because they came from last year. Um, in here, we are covering these plants because they will be decimated by a variety of uh, insects. These are our brassicas, so cabbages. Uh, there's a red cabbage, it's probably a white cabbage, uh, and um, kale, etc. So these ones we have to protect. So this is a transparent, translucent, sorry, not transparent, translucent covering that we use to keep the insects away from these particular plants. All right, moving on. An entire row of cabbage-related plants. going to drop the skates off here a second, assuming that I don't forget them. And moving down to the final section of our growing area. This is the high tunnel where we keep, keep the uh, chickens in the winter. Uh, in this particular instance you'll see that it's Primarily uh, tomatoes, so a row of tomatoes there, a row of tomatoes here, and then a row, a double row of peppers on that side. And uh, what we're doing is uh, watering them at this point. Uh, so I don't know if you can see the mist. Yeah, it's showing up. Uh, so the mist is coming from drip uh, watering lines that are here uh, amongst the plants themselves. Um, so these are well fertilized because they've got uh, the fertilizer from the chickens uh, over the winter and then we've uh, supplemented that with a little bit of compost um, on top of the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, triple mix uh, soil on top of the compost itself. 
So we're hoping that uh, these are going to be quite prolific this year and give us lots and lots of um, peppers and tomatoes. So we'll be coming back up in here and whatever that was, um, and we'll be tying the tomatoes up to the overhead uh, uh, mullions that you, you see running alongside. Uh, so we've got three rows of those. Um, so we can actually use them to tie them up, just as we did last year. And we'll show you that when we get to that point. All right, there's one half row that I didn't show you up here, or I guess it's just a portion of a row. Our compost bin, it should be pretty ready to go at least with one portion of it. All right, we're back into the carrot row. Some carrots. And these are leek, apparently. And the leeks are doing quite well. They're growing quite nicely. There are grapes. So there's one grape plant there. And here's another grape plant there. Um, we have additional um, berries, etc in a variety of locations. So if we come over here, this is black currant bush. And as you can see, it's just loaded with black currants, lots and lots. Here's another black currant bush. Again, lots and lots of berries. Those will be ripe in a while. And then here we have proud owners of an oak tree. Uh, not sure exactly what kind of oak. I think it's a white oak, but I could be wrong. I'm just going by memory here. The, uh, the lobes of the leaves, etc. I think. Uh, anyways, um, it has grown substantially. The first year that we had it was uh, all of, you know, a couple of, of uh, centimeters, maybe five to seven centimeters in height, a couple of leaves, and I protected it in uh, the first two years uh, with this uh, hardware cloth, and it is now growing well above the, uh, the level of the uh, hardware cloth itself. And I hope that we're going to end up with a mighty oak tree uh, growing here. Uh, oaks and maples are the uh, climax trees in this particular area, uh, as they are in most of South Central um, Ontario. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but there with red tips on it, is a maple tree that we um, we planted as well a couple of years ago and it is the only one of four or five that we planted that are still remaining here on this side we've got some fruit trees so this is an apple tree while it looks like it's on our neighbor's property um, this is actually our property uh, moving to that red post right there. So anything to the left of that red post is our neighbor's property. Anything to the right of the post is uh, our property. So this um, apple tree is actually on our property, even though the neighbor likes to uh, uh, cut, the lot, cut the grass. And she, we're happy to have her do that. Um, this is a pear tree, and it's doing quite nicely as well going to have to do some pruning I think this uh, this fall this is another apple tree and it's doing quite nicely as well what kind of apple you asked uh, so this one is oh, something called Wolf River maybe that's just the name of the nursery and again another pear tree uh, which again looks like it's doing quite nicely All right, um, these are lilac bushes. So there's a an oriental lilac bush that uh, Blooms a little bit later than this one um, And then this one is a forsythia. So it's 
one of the first blooms that we actually see early in the spring. Uh, nice yellow color. And there was a hascap bush in here somewhere, but I no longer see it. So we're probably going to have to get some more hascaps and plant them. Um, very little left of our topsoil that we originally brought over. So the rest of this will go into our raised beds when we put them together. Uh, Rachel has been working here at clean, clearing out the raspberry bush. Um, so you can see raspberry bushes all the way along and some of them are coming to berry quite nicely. Uh, there's, we're going to end up with a, a pretty good haul this year. Um, again, this is second year for uh, berry bushes, so we're primarily interested in establishing the bushes and uh, putting walkways in, so that's why you're seeing the wood chips uh, being located in here. Got another row of raspberries here, and then I think there's another row there, so there's a raspberry plant, there's a raspberry plant. And uh, these are plum trees, so this is a plum tree and then its companion tree over there. Um, we saw some blossoms on this tree earlier in the spring, but whether they were fertilized or not is another question, because I do not see any fruit this year. So that means that that tree has to get its act together. Um, there is a, uh, I don't know if, if it has been scientifically validated or not, but the idea that once you see um, blossoms on your plum trees, it is safe to plant in your gardens. So that's really important here, because uh, we, we generally, get ready to plant in our garden, get the garden ready, etc. Uh, around the Victoria Day weekend, which is usually around the 24th of May or so. Um, but sometimes we end up with quite cold temperatures in this particular area because we are relatively far north and we're probably more than an hour north of uh, the Great Lakes that, that is closer. Uh, that's Lake Ontario. And as a consequence, we may end up with uh, frost quite late in May, and uh, that will wreak, wreak havoc on your uh, uh, your planting. Um, just a little bit of uh, show and tell in terms of plants. So here we have a, I can't remember the, the tree uh, that we've planted here. Uh, this one was um, pushed over by a, uh, a snowbank this winter where we had the uh, uh, snowplow come and push snow right over top of it so we didn't know if it would be damaged or not but it looks like it's doing quite well and it's blooming. Uh, maybe it's surface berry. Um, here we have a locust tree, sunburst locust and we tend to plant sunburst locusts in every location uh, that we move to. And so this is our first sunburst locust. We're talking about planting another one in the back. Here's another service berry. You can see it's got the same flowers on it. And here's another plant of some kind or other. Um, Trisha's uh, flower patch in the front here. Uh, with some very, very lovely um, lilies, and I can't remember what those are. Uh, lupin, maybe, delphinium, something along those lines, and junipers in the back. One, two, three junipers. And here, I think this is another service berry, but it's had some issues. Um, you can see that the the tree itself um, from last year. Oh, it's had some da damage at the bottom. That's what's going on. So it's probably some uh, 
vicious rabbits again. And here we have blue spruce. One, two, three blue spruce that eventually we hope are going to grow up and hold, uh, hide our uh, power tower here. Um, that's about all that I can show you at this point in time. Um, so this will be sort of the garden tour for the end of June. Uh, it's June 22nd. Um, and uh, we'll update you more with uh, what we're working on. Today, because of predictions of lots and lots of water, uh, we'll probably be working in the garage and uh, trying to get uh, that straightened out, uh, taking the chicken brooder out so that it's ready for uh, next fall when we'll be doing the meat birds one more time. You can see they're getting a little bit more active as we move towards lunchtime. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.